Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection. I'm your host Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today's going to be a short little episode um, with some new, newer releases from Lon Chaney. Uh, it's been some great releases by Eureka and um, another one from Kino. So I was going to kind of guide you through those and uh, show you the differences and all that good stuff. So let's start with the first one, shall we? Uh, this was released last year. Uh, this is a movie from 1920 called Outside the Law. And um, it was directed by Todd Browning, who would work with uh, Lon Chaney quite a bit in the 1920s. Um, and it was rumored uh, around 1930 um, that Todd Browning was going to do Dracula with Lon Chaney as Dracula, which that would have been pretty interesting. Uh, but he unfortunately died in 1930 and um, kind of dashed those plans. But the project was still in Todd Browning's hands. And, of course, as history goes, Bela Lugosi would get the role and he would be immortally known as Count Dracula. So, um, so anyways, he does a pretty good job on this. This is kind of a crime picture. Um, Lon Chaney plays a character named Black Mike, who's a lifelong criminal, a pretty slick guy. You kind of see the gleam in his eye and his his little smile, sneer that he has. And it's a pretty straightforward role for him. It's not so much uh, in costume or makeup or anything. Um, and he, he's actually like third build on this. Um, it was really a starring picture for the actress uh, Priscilla Dean, who... Um, Todd Browning did a few movies with her. I think one of them was called White Tiger or something like that. And I haven't yet to see that. Or It's on Blu-ray. I think Kino put that out. Uh, but yeah, this is a good movie. The other actor in it, um, Wheeler Oakman as Dapper Bill. And um, Priscilla Dean's uh, name was Molly Madden. Um so it's kind of a straightforward uh, kind of double crossing of uh, two criminals. Actually, they're all into all three of them are together to steal some diamonds or something. And uh, they, st you know, the towards the end, middle part of the picture, they, you know, they do like a backstabbing. And I don't want to give it all away, but it kind of turns the tides on, turns the kind of turns it on Lon Chaney. He kind of. So it's, it's a really interesting movie. I mean, it's 76 minutes. It's short and sweet. It is from 1920. Uh, so, you know, it's 1920. Uh, but um, not quite so static, though. Uh, the camera moves well. Todd Browning has an eye for the kind of the odd and detail for the kind of weird and stuff. It's not, you know, of course, this isn't a macabre uh, gothic tale or anything. So um, pretty good. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you can find yourself a uh, used copy or something. Fortunately, it didn't have a slipcase on it. I guess it, it wasn't released with a slipcase. Uh, but it does come with a booklet, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's got a lot of pictures. There's a picture of uh, Priscilla Dean there. There's a nice uh, silhouette, Lon Chaney. But yeah, it's... Uh, pretty nice actually it's got a lot of cool stuff that i've never really seen a lot of photos uh stuff like that there's a picture of lon cheney but yeah pretty nice i recommend uh picking this one up so the next one i want to talk about is um now this came out about a month or two ago uh from eureka uh, this is uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, however you want to pronounce it. And uh, this is a really nice addition. Um, I really like the colors and the art on this, on this slipcase. Now, this did come, you know, obviously with a slipcase. And it has a, a secondary cover art, which is more, uh, more famously known. Uh, that's kind of a... Uh, now this was a photograph that they you know did a painting of um so um 
but it's really cool. Um, this movie turns 100 years old this year. It was made in 1923. Uh, let me see some stuff here. Uh, it was directed by Wallace uh, Worsley, which um, he was pretty much a um, silent film director. Never really heard much about him after the 20s. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice addition. As usual, Eureka usually does a great deal of uh, they put a, a qu quite a bit into it this is a 4k restoration that was done by Universal uh, a couple years ago and um, it has music by Nora Coral Kroll Rosenbaum and Laura Carpman and uh, it's got some really cool actually it's got a couple of audio commentaries it's got two really good interviews with uh, one with uh, Kim Newman where he does a breakdown of all the different uh, film versions and actually some Broadway versions of of the the tale, the story, a little bit of back backstory on the book and everything. Uh, what was it Hugo? What was his name? Oh, what's his name? Do 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 do. Does it say? Victor Hugo is what I'm... It's not written on here, but I just remember that. Um, but yeah, this was known as a um, Super Jewel film when it was released by Universal. They released like four movies that year, and they were all the big budget, the big movies they were proud of, and they were lavish and released lavishly on the road and tons of promotion for it and everything. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it's it's this movie's really aged well. I mean, it's you know you got some of the silent dramatics going on at times, but but for the most part, all the leads are really good. Uh, uh, now this wasn't the first movie that Lon Chaney did you know special makeup for, but this is one of his his most famous uh, makeup jobs that he did. He did his own work. Um, all of it by himself. He invent these characters and stuff, so it's it's really good. Um, and um, wait a minute, I have lost my light. Yeah, lost my light. Technical difficulties, guys. But anyways, a really good movie. Um, was I talking about the uh, but yeah there's two great interviews on here in the supplements uh, one with Kim Newman and the second one is with film historian Jonathan Rigby and uh, both of them are really fascinating um, I really enjoy Jonathan Rigby's um, talk about the movie it's uh, he talks mainly about the movie and Lon Chaney Kim Newman kind of covers the same thing but kind of covers all the different versions and um, it's really nice. It's got a really cool uh, booklet. It's a little bit thicker than the Outside the Law one. Pretty cool. He got Chaney and his makeup there. Uh, this is the co-star. I should probably tell you about the, the actors in this. Um, this is uh, Patsy Ruth Miller, who plays El Elsmeral uh, Esmeralda. Uh, and then... Um, this other guy that's like this dashing soldier his name is norman carey uh which pretty much he disappeared into obscurity after the 20s and um it doesn't do a complete let me see the booklet should have all the people in it yeah here we go yeah patsy ruth miller norman carey uh a lot of people that are, have, are very obscure now. Um, other than Tully Marshall, I've heard of him before. He plays Louis the Eleventh, I think. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. It, the booklet's really cool. It's got a lot of photos, got a lot of the set design. Uh, it was a massive set when they built this. Uh, and it was actually used quite a bit uh, on some other movies. Um, uh, the next the next version of this would be uh, 1939 where uh, Charles Lawton would be Quasimodo and uh, Maureen O'Hara as Esmeralda and um, 
that was a really good version the first sound version of it and everything and it's a classic but this is where it all really got famous and started was with the Lon Chaney version it's still to this day the most you know still one of the more famous versions of it and everything uh, but other than the, the the musical score two commentaries and two interviews uh, that's about it on that one so I want to show you the uh, Kino version that I I got this one um, earlier in last year and um, it's from the same 4k restoration as the Eureka version uh, but it has a lot more bonus features on this so if you have it and you want to get the Eureka I recommend both of them but this one's really loaded with stuff um, one thing I did notice that this is running time is 110 minutes and the other one is 140 minutes so I wonder is that a is this one longer I, there was no mention of different you know on on these releases ones at you know longer or shorter so i'm gonna figure that one out but this one's got this uh, it's got an audio commentary by farron smith neem uh the booklet essay is done by michael blake uh, it's got some newsreel footage or 16 millimeter home movie footage uh, of Lon Chaney from the film and video collection of UC Berkeley. Um, maybe I think I've seen this before. It's kind of vacation stuff, some stuff on on set. Uh, it's got the same musical score as the Eureka one by Nora Kroll Rosenbaum. Uh, it's got a, a slideshow of the uh, official movie program that came out during release it's got production stills and some publicity materials um, all done in a slideshow form uh, but yeah it says black and white with some color tinting and uh, it's at a 133 ratio let me see if it kind of matches up with this one yeah they're both at a 133 but this one says 100 minutes and this one says 110 minutes so i'm gonna figure that one out but they're both really good they both look great they're both from the same restoration so um there might be little bits of the this and that there usually eureka has really good encoding and stuff on it which sometimes make them look a little bit better uh, but Kino's uh, really known for their quality stuff. So there you go, The Hunchback of Notre Dame on Kino. Uh, before I forget about it, this one actually comes with a booklet, which is um, kind of rare for Kino to put booklets in it. But um, it focuses a lot on, it shows a lot of stuff from that program, um, the release program. It's not as in-depth as the Eureka one, which is much bigger, uh, but still, it's, it's a nice little read, and uh, it's got some photos and stuff in there. But yeah, it was a big deal when this was released, 1923. I mean, people thought it was just horrific and scary and wanting to ban it and whatnot and stuff, and... Uh, but it's nothing compared to anything done nowadays, so it's funny nowadays. But, man, Lon Chaney did a great performance in it. Um, two years later, he will do The Phantom of the Opera, which would even more uh, make him even more popular in the public eye. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, five years after that, he would be gone um, but uh, a lot of his movies are on video, DVD. There's a bunch from Warner Archive you can pick up. Um, unfortunately, some of his movies are lost. Most famously, London After Midnight from 1927 is one of the most famous lost films. Uh, also directed by Todd Browning. Uh, so maybe one day, maybe not. Um, a photo recreation of that movie uh, was on a uh, TCM Archives DVD release that came out in like 2007 or 8. Um, and um, if, if you want to see more about that, I, I did a Lon Chaney collection video way back about three years ago, so you can check that out uh, on my channel. Uh, but that's it, guys. I just wanted to kind of show the different things, and I highly recommend both of those, um, depending on what kind of deal you can find or if you're just a Lon Chaney maniac like me uh, you just have to have the different versions um, but there's a bunch of versions of Phantom of the Opera that I don't have though so 
So I don't always double dip and get everything. Depending on what's in the Blu-ray or DVD is what counts. So I don't mind getting that. But anyways, guys, uh, that's about it for this episode. Just a little short one. And uh, don't forget to uh, like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe. And all that good stuff. So until next time, guys, I am Mike. Thank you for checking out the episode, and I will see you later.